Welcome to the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. A show all about reviewing dinosaurs on a scale of 1 to 10 fossils before only the elite terrible lizards make it into the prehistoric cage match. This program is presented by the Stomp Tromp Roar Company and can be heard within all the rock layers across the planet. Grab your dinosaurs and your official scorecard because it's now time to dig for dinosaurs. Here's your Mesozoic host, Dinosaur Ranger Anthony. Greetings, my Antarctica dinosaur explorers. You're listening to the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. This is your exploration guide and your host of the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. This is Dinosaur Ranger Anthony. Now, today's adventure will take us to the bottom of the earth and onto the continent of Antarctica. Now, in Antarctica, that's where we find penguins. That's where we find 90% of the ice on earth, and that's where we find today's dinosaur species. Now this week's podcast is almost six months or half a year until the Christmas holiday. So instead of visiting the North Pole, let's go ahead and visit the South Pole. Now do you guys want to hear something funny? So I came down to my science lab studio about 20 minutes ago to record today's podcast. Now every week before I record, I always make myself a nice iced coffee. Well today I went and set my iced coffee on my recording table and you guys I went to go grab one of my dinosaur figures from my dinosaur storage containers right next to my studio well you guys my microphone spun around on its axis and went and bam knocked over my iced coffee iced coffee went all over my dinosaur uh, shelves sitting right next to me and just gave all my dinosaurs the biggest ice bath they had ever seen so it's really fitting that today we're taken an Antarctica adventure and all my dinosaurs got a quick ice bath. You guys, I just wanted to scream like a T-Rex and just make the biggest roar that I could ever do. But you guys, I just hurry up and got some rags, hurry up and cleaned it up so I could get to today's podcast. Now you guys, let's update you on some dinopreneur news before we get started on today's dinosaur species. Now you guys, we just have a few more days to sign up for camp. Stomp, chomp, roar. Are you ready for a week full of dinosaurs, fossils, Jurassic Park, and so much more? Then go ahead and join my virtual summer camp. It's going to be from July 4th through July 8th. It'll consist of three virtual lessons, one on Monday, one on Wednesday, and one on Friday of that week. We'll talk about dinosaurs, fossils, Jurassic Park, Ice Age mammals, just tons of prehistoric life on Tuesday and Thursday of that week. I'll send you guys some activities that you'll be able to do at your house, like maybe a scavenger hunt or some dinosaur research uh, projects. So go ahead, you guys, if you want to learn more about my virtual summer camp, Camp Stomp Chomp Roar, go ahead and visit my website at stompchomproar.com slash summer camp for some more details. Now, yesterday I went and posted it, uh, the official summer camp schedule on my Patreon club, become a fossil hunter or a raptor pack member to take full advantage of the virtual summer camp. Now, you guys, this Sunday, June 26th, will be my second virtual lesson for my Patreon club members, and it's going to be all about pop culture dinosaurs other than Jurassic Park. So what are some other famous dinosaurs besides Rexy from the Jurassic Park franchise? What about Littlefoot or Dino, Dragonzord, Godzilla, Fantasia, Gumby, Rex, and so much more? We're going to be talking about tons of other famous dinosaurs from all other kinds of movies, books, and TV shows. Also, you guys, shout out to Mattia for being my first international Patreon club member. Can you guys believe that? That is just totally awesome. So shout out to you, Mattia. He loves the Velociraptor, and he lives all the way over in the continent of Europe. So shout out to you, Mattia. Thank you so much for joining my Patreon club. Now that leads us into some more shout outs, you guys. Shout out to Elkhorn Kids Campus. 
I went to and visited the Spring Ridge and the West Dodge Station location on this week on Monday. Had tons of fun doing my prehistoric pep rally for all those kiddos out there. Also, shout out to Through the Years Child Care of Papillion, Primrose at Falling Waters, and La Petite of Papillion. I went and visited all three of those child care centers yesterday on Tuesday. Had tons of fun with all those kiddos. Let them feed Paleo our baby Spinosaurus. Some of them brushed his teeth, and then we even exploded our gigantic uh, volcano experiment. We just had so much fun yesterday doing all three of those child care centers. Now also, shout out to A Step Ahead of Bellevue. We'll be visiting your child care center later today on Wednesday, and then tomorrow, you guys, we're going to do our first I-80 Dinosaur Road Trip. We're taking the Jurassic Jeep out to Corny, Nebraska, about two and a half, three hours away from Omaha, where I live, and we're going to visit four awesome child care centers out there over Thursday and Friday of this week. So shout out to the Planbeck of UNK off the University of Nebraska Kearney campus. Shout out to the YMCA. Shout out to Sunshine World, and shout out to Family Suites Learning Center. We're going to go visit four Four of those child care centers out there on our awesome I-80 dinosaur road trip. We cannot visit, uh, cannot wait to go out there and visit Kearney, Nebraska. Also some shout outs for some awesome birthday parties for this weekend you guys. Happy 5th birthday to Dawson. We'll be visiting your birthday party on Saturday. And a happy 6th birthday to Liam. We'll be visiting your birthday party on Sunday. I also wanted to give a happy, happy birthday to Sully Tegan. Alex and Cam. Each of these kiddos are members of my Patreon club and all have birthdays during the month of June. So happy birthday to all four of you guys. You guys are totally awesome and great Patreon club members. Now you guys, let's go ahead and sit back, grab our scorecards, grab a cold glass of lemonade because here in Omaha, it has just been hot, hot, hot here in Nebraska. We're just about getting into triple digits here in Omaha. So I need to get some cold weather in me. So that's why we're going down to Antarctica for today's dinosaur species. So it's time for our next review and it's going to be a cold one. Let's go ahead and grab our dinosaur review for kids scorecard. And remember, you can print these off for free. So just go to my website, stompchomproar.com. Click on that science lab tab and you'll see the post about the dinosaur review for kids podcast. And you can can print off for free the official Dinosaur Review for Kids scorecard. So here we go, you guys. We're going down to Antarctica for our Antarctica exploration or our adventure. Today's dinosaur species is the Cryolophosaurus. The Cryolophosaurus, which means cold crest lizard. The Cryolophosaurus. And some people also call it the Elvisaurus. The Elvisaurus. And we'll get to why people call it that in just a few moments. Now our Cryolophosaurus, you guys, is a Saurischian dinosaur, which means it's a lizard-hipped dinosaur, and then it falls in that theropod family. The theropods are those bipedal carnivores. They walk on two legs, and they eat all kinds of meat. Now, you guys, it was very difficult finding out what dinosaur family our Cryolophosaurus actually fit into. I didn't see anything that told me positively 100% for sure that was its family. I seen a little bit about some similarities with all the Allosaurids, like Allosaurus, and maybe even a little bit with the Dilophosaurus, like we see in Jurassic Park, that has the double crested uh, on its head, just like the crest of this one that we'll talk about in just a moment. So it is a Saurischian, and there, and then a theropod for sure. So a Cryolophosaurus, you guys. How big was this dinosaur? What was its length, its height, its weight? Well, our Cryolophosaurus is up to 26 feet in length, or eight meters and then six feet high or two meters and coming in at 2,000 pounds or one ton. Now it is a lot smaller than like T-Rex, uh, Giganotosaurus, Spinosaurus, but our Cryolophosaurus
Dinosaurus is actually the largest early Jurassic period theropod dinosaur. So it is the biggest of its environment during that time period. Now, how fast was the Crylophosaurus? This one's coming in at about 21 to 25 miles per hour. It's walking on that bipedal stance. Two lightweight uh, legs, very strong muscular legs. They're slender, lightweight, bird-like legs moving quite quickly through the Jurassic period up to 21, 25 miles per hour. A little bit quicker than our Tyrannosaurus Rex that probably could have maybe got up to 20 miles per hour. Now, what was the weapons, defense, or other characteristics of our Cryolophosaurus? Well, this dinosaur is a medium-sized theropod, so it's somewhere in the middle between a Velociraptor and a Tyrannosaurus Rex. So we're putting it right there in the middle. Now, its skull, its head, is very narrow. They have a high skull, and it's up to 26 inches in length, or just over 2 feet in length. T-Rex's skull is 5 feet in length. So our Crylophosaurus skull is a lot smaller. Now, what's really cool about this one is they have a small nasal crest that's curled upwards and it faces forward, somewhat of like a pompadour hairstyle that we might see on some people living around today. Like maybe even Elvis Presley that lived back uh, during the 60s and 70s and had all that awesome rock and roll music. So that's why they call them sometimes the Elvisaurus, because Elvis Presley had that pompadour hairstyle, and that's what we see right here on our nasal crest of the Crylophosaurus. It is very small, nasal crest, goes up the nose, and then around the eyes, it starts to curl upwards, and it faces forward, giving it that pompadour look. Now, what was it used for? Was it used for any kind of defense or maybe some sort of weapon? Probably not. It was probably more for mating or recognition. Maybe the males had cool colors on it to tell uh, to try to draw in a mate, a girlfriend, so they can have babies and have more species for the Crylophosaurus. Or maybe it's a little bit more for recognition, cool colors, different impressions on them. Just like how we all look different and all of our fingerprints are different between all the humans, then maybe that's how they tell us. Uh, were able to tell each other apart between maybe a small pack they were living in or all the other Crylophosaurus within their environment. Now, this dinosaur has saw edge sharp teeth and they're also curved backwards. That's something we see in other theropod dinosaurs like the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Their teeth are curved backwards. So when they bite another dinosaur, another creature, it acts as like a hook into their skin to trap their prey. Now, our Cryolophosaurus, you guys, they believe has poor binocular vision, but a very large brain, so they might have been really advanced during the early Jurassic period. Now, they have slender-like arms and slender legs. They would have been very quick. They have those hollow, lightweight bones, making them really quick through their environment. They have that stiff tail behind them. Dinosaurs have those long tails that helps them more move quickly, more agile, all throughout their environment they're living in. Now, you guys, they find tendons in the back of the tail. Now, tendons are what holds muscles to the bone. Just like in our bodies, we have tendons that attach our muscles to the bone. So did dinosaurs. So they find tendons back in the back of the tail of our Crylophosaurus, and they would have turned into bone. So that's how we know dinosaurs' tails were stiff, and they weren't wagging around like a, like a dog or a cat that might be living at your house right now. Now, you guys, on the toy figure I have right here, they have the nasal uh, head crest that you can see right here on this Crylophosaurus, but the toy even gives it somewhat of a sail crest that goes down its neck right here and goes into somewhat of a small sail that goes on their back, their upper back, above their hips. Now, there's no fossil evidence of any sort of sail that goes down their neck and onto their back. So even though we find it in this toy right here of our Crylophosaurus from Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, it wouldn't have actually had anything like that going down its back or its neck right there from what we found in the fossil record. Possibly they could have had something that maybe didn't fossilize, something that was more made out of some kind of flesh or skin material, but we don't find anything in the fossil record that gives it any kind of sail uh, or any kind of crest that is going down its 
its neck or onto its back right there. Just that nasal crest up there that curves frontward, curves up and faces frontward. Now you guys, they also have three fingered claws on their arms right there, getting all kinds of prey, possibly longer arms than our Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now you guys, where did this dinosaur live and how long did the Krylophosaurus live during the Mesozoic era? So this dinosaur species is coming in at about 200 to 182 million years ago during that early Jurassic period. Now it's found down in Antarctica about 400 miles from the South Pole. Now it was named back in 1994 by Hammer and Hickerson and it was found just three years before that back in 1991 which happens to be the same year my little brother Daniel is born. So shout out to you Dan. Now you guys this is the first theropod dinosaur that was found in Antarctica, but it was actually the second dinosaur to be found down in Antarctica. So the Antarctica opelta was another type of ankylosaur dinosaur, and that is what was the first dinosaur found down there in Antarctica. Now when we talk about Antarctica, I told you guys about penguins, 90% of the ice on Earth, but back during the Mesozoic era, there was no ice caps. So there was no ice in the South Pole or the North Pole. Antarctica was closer to the equator or the center of the Earth and it had forests. So maybe there was conifer forest that our Cryolophosaurus would have been running around during the early Jurassic period. So you guys, a quick recap. Our Cryolophosaurus is 26 feet in length, up to 6 feet high, up to 2,000 pounds. The largest theropod of the early Jurassic period can run up to 25 miles per hour, a very narrow high high skull, but they have that very cool nasal crest, that pompadour-like look, kind of like Elvis Presley rocking and rolling. They have saw-edge sharp teeth that curve backwards, poor vision, large brain, slender arms and legs with those three finger claws, and a very stiff tail. They lived back during the early Jurassic period on what is now Antarctica. So what do we give our Cryolophosaurus on the official fossil scale? What are we going to score this dinosaur? dinosaur, this medium-sized theropod creature, one fossil for some of the worst dinosaurs, and ten fossils for some of the best dinosaurs. So you guys, we're going to give this medium-sized dinosaur a 8.2, an 8.2 for our Cryolophosaurus. It is a medium-sized theropod-sized uh, dinosaur, doesn't get those nines like our gigantic Spinosaurus, Giganotosaurus, or Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's still pretty cool. I love that nasal crest on it, you guys. Back during college, I even tried to rock a little bit a pompadour-like look. I just loved the 60s and 70s. I was a history minor in college, so I just loved that time period. But what do you guys think about this cold score? Would you guys go down to cold Antarctica? I think it would be kind of cool to visit, right? See all the penguins go lay out on the cold beaches full of snow. I actually think I'll take a sandy beach over snow. But you guys, a quick joke before we go today. What do you call a cold penguin? What do you call a cold penguin? Hmm. What about a bird? Because if birds are dinosaurs and penguins are flightless birds, then are penguins dinosaurs? Hmm, I believe so, right? Now you guys remember just a couple more days to sign up for camp. Stomp, chomp, roar, my virtual summer camp that will be July 4th through July 8th. We're gonna have tons of fun talking about all kinds of prehistoric life. All the time periods, all the fossils, all the dinosaurs, all the ice age creatures. We might even have an ice cream social when we talk about our woolly mammoth, who happens to be the state fossil of of Nebraska where I live. So you guys remember to go to stompchomproar.com to find out some more details about the virtual summer camp and become official Patreon club member as a fossil hunter or raptor pack member to take full advantage of the virtual summer camp. You guys, my name is Dinosaur Ranger Anthony, your tour guide for today's adventure down in Antarctica for the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. And as remember, always keep digging for dinosaurs. We'll see you guys later. Ah!